again, and welcome to this diddly about grammar. Now, the very first thing we need to discuss about grammar are the eight parts of speech. Every single word in the English dictionary essentially fits into one of the eight categories we call parts of speech. What are the eight parts of speech? I'm glad you asked. They are nouns, pronouns, adjectives, verbs, adverbs, conjunctions, prepositions, and interjections. Oh, how delightful! Oh, yes! Where are my manners? I've forgotten to introduce you to this video's special guest, the author of the first American dictionary, Mr. Noah Webster. Oh, hello, children. I'll be helping you to learn about grammar. You sound like you've been sucking on helium, man. Special people are like that sometimes. Oh, very good. Now, the eight parts of speech... Let's say them again. Well, then, okay. And y'all watching this video say them with me. Nouns, pronouns, adjectives, verbs, adverbs, conjunctions, prepositions, and interjections. Very good, children. Yes, very good and somewhat creepy. Moving on. Let's try to define each of the eight parts of speech. We'll start with nouns. Most of you probably know that a noun is a person, place, or thing. That's what I was told. And that's mostly all true. However, I want to add one more bit to that definition. You see, there are certain words that are nouns that don't quite fit into the description of persons, places, or things. Words like love and freedom and faith. These words are more like ideas than anything else. So let's just say that a noun is most any person, place, thing, or idea. So pretty much anything you can buy at Walmart? Well, I don't know if ideas work with that. You can't really buy love at Walmart now, can you? Say what you want. I found it. They've got everything there. Okay, then. So nouns are probably one of the easiest parts of speech to learn. However, it's not practical in our speech to use nouns all the time. Right. For example, it doesn't make any sense to say Noah saw some children and Noah asked them to get into Noah's fan. Exactly. Which brings us to our next part of speech, pronouns. Pronouns take the place of nouns. So, using Noah's example, we'd say, he saw some children and he asked them to get into his van. In those examples, Noah is a noun, because he's a person, and the words he and his act as pronouns that take the place of the noun Noah. Now, some other examples of words that are pronouns include... He, she, it! For goodness sakes, man, you can't say that! This is an educational film! I said he, she, and it. Oh, right, yes. All examples of pronouns. Very good. Um, now, there are lots more pronouns, in fact, but we'll have to cover them all in another video. Now, quick review. Nouns are persons, places, things, or ideas. And pronouns take the place of nouns. Next, we have adjectives. And these are describing words. But here's the catch. Adjectives only describe nouns and pronouns. Perhaps a brief musical interlude can help me better explain. I like big butts and I cannot lie. You other brothers can't deny. And when a girl walks in with an itty bitty waist and a round thing in your face, you get sprung. Wanna pull up tough, cause you notice that butt was stuck. Deep in the jeans she's wearing. I'm hooked and I can't stop staring. Oh, baby, I wanna get whipped up and take your picture. My whole boy's trying to warn me, but that butt you got. Oh, my. I enjoy dancing to that song. Yes, uh, so adjectives only describe nouns and pronouns. If you're not sure if a describing word is an adjective, look closely at the word it's describing. If it's a noun or pronoun, you've got an adjective. Next we have verbs. These are action words. Yes, but there are also linking verbs as well. The action verbs are easiest. You know that any kind of action usually indicates an action verb. Like... Would you like to play at my house? Or maybe you'd like to rub my shoulders? You've got to stop that. The other kinds of verbs are linking verbs, and these help join a sentence together. Words like is, are, and were are all examples. In the sentence, he is nifty, is links together the sentence. Here's the rule, though. All complete sentences must contain at least one verb. If you're looking at a sentence and you can't find one... It's probably because I did something with it. 
Do you want to help me find it? Look, I'm kicking you off this video if you don't behave. How would you kick me? Excuse me? Would you kick me quickly? Why on earth are you asking me that? Because I'm trying to get you to describe a verb. That's what adverbs do. Brilliant, yes. Adverbs describe or modify verbs. So I would quickly kick Noah. Quickly kick, that is, if he kept acting the way he has been. And it would hurt badly if you did that to me. A good hint to remember is that most adverbs end in L-Y. That isn't the case all the time. For instance, the word well is an adverb. As in, he licked that ice cream cone well. Because well describes how he licked the cone. We best move along to conjunctions. Conjunctions join all kinds of things together, be they words, phrases, or clauses. There are two kinds of conjunctions, coordinating and subordinating. Coordinating conjunctions only join together equal things. Look at this sentence. She bought milk, bread, and butter. In this sentence, the conjunction is the word and. We know this because it joins together the words milk, bread, and butter. In all of those words, milk, bread, butter, are nouns. In this sentence, she went shopping and she came home. And joins together two complete sentences. Again, the coordinating conjunction joins together equal things, two complete sentences. There are only seven words in the English language that are coordinating conjunctions. For, and, nor, but, or, yet, so. You can remember these because they form the acronym FANBOYS. I like the FANBOYS. I knew you would. Finally, subordinating conjunctions join unequal things. These are mostly used to connect incomplete thoughts with complete ones. An example would be, Oh, let me try. Oh, boy. Let's go to my swimming hole after it gets dark. And where is the sub- After. After is the subordinating conjunction, and it joins, it gets dark, to my swimming hole. So, if anyone is still watching this, so far we've discussed nouns. Which are persons, places, things, or ideas. Pronouns, which take the place of nouns. Adjectives, which describe nouns and pronouns. Verbs, which show action or link a subject and predicate. And adverbs, which describe only verbs. And we just finished conjunctions, which brings us to prepositions. Uh, These are a bit tricky to define. Prepositions are words that give language its dimension. For instance, the word to, T-O, is often a preposition. We say this word all the time. Let's walk to the park. Take me to your leader. This love song goes out from me to you. Anyway, prepositions, words like to or from, under, over, through, between, inside, and so on, they give language its shape and direction. A good rule of thumb for prepositions is, if a mouse can do it to a hollow log... Now you're talking. ...then it's probably a preposition. Lastly, we have interjections. Oh! That's a terrific example, actually. Interjections are words that have no real grammatical meaning, but interrupt or interject into the sentence. I was interjecting because I have a bit of history to share. Oh, really? You know what they called interjections a long time ago? Yes, and... I don't think it's appropriate. Ejaculations! Well, folks, there you have them. All eight. Periodically awkward, but they are nonetheless parts of speech. Nouns, pronouns, adjectives, verbs, adverbs, conjunctions, prepositions, and interjections. Together, these eight parts of speech form the framework for the parts of a sentence, and later on, phrases and clauses. These parts of speech are the underpinning for all our language. I'm so glad y'all watched this special video. Yes, and if I can keep Noah Webster here out of jail long enough, we'll be back in a jiffy to tell you more about grammar. Until then... Hope to see you soon.